Alrighty, 15 minutes to talk about a meta topic. Let's go. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Boyan Zhivic. I'm a AWS ambassador, serverless community builder, and I work for Mantle Group. And if you want to talk a little more, that's my LinkedIn. So I thought I might get it out of the way nice and early. So, a bit of a mouthful, agnostic serverless infrastructure as code. And we're really focusing on the evolution over time because what we do things today was definitely different from when AWS first created CloudFormation and then every little tidbit in between. But what are we really focusing on? Why are we talking about agnostic serverless infrastructure as code? It's because we're really talking about Kubernetes. No, we're not, don't worry. No one's talking about Kubernetes, especially not at this place here. Kubernetes is a bit more like this at the end of the day. It's great, it's big, it's fun, and then you hit yourself in the face. Go serverless. But look, if we really want to talk about infrastructure as code, uh, we're going to look at the beginning. And to do that, we'll look at history. So what came first? Not the chicken and the egg, but was it CloudFormation? Was it Terraform? Was it ARM from Azure? Here's a hint, it wasn't, it wasn't ARM. Well, funnily enough, it was GNU Make. Because I'm, I'm going to ask a question here, right? Hands up who, makes, who uses Make files today or has used them or plans to use them, literally everybody here. That's my point. Because GNU, or rather Make specifically, is technically correct. The best, best kind of correct, right? But look, hold up, hear me out. I have a solid reason for it, right? It came first. It was in the 1970s, right? And the concept of why I'm saying Make was amongst the first infrastructure as code, because Make helped make, that's a pun, um, configuration management a reality. You can mix in a bunch of languages or code or shell script or so on and so forth into a single file to help deterministically create your application. And infrastructure as code is just the evolution of that, where we, instead of making our application better or quicker to deploy or build or compile, we do that to infrastructure that AWS or Azure or Oracle, don't use Oracle Cloud, um, or these other cloud providers do for us. And from that make concept spawned configuration management as we know it, Chef, Ansible, CF Engine if you are there during the early days, right? And honestly, they continue. To this day, you'll still see these big three around. Uh, Chef, not so much. Puppet, pretty much everywhere if you're in some legacy sector. And Ansible is around no matter how much we can help it. Don't use Ansible. Kill it with fire as soon as possible. Especially don't use it for infrastructure as code. If you want to hear why, come to the Mantle booth and give yourself about an hour. I've got a good long story to give you how Ansible breaks things. But look, it's configuration management. That's the precursor to infrastructure as code. And honestly, there was a bit of an evolution, right? When we started off with configuration management, it was all about the app. But then infrastructure as code came through with the evolution of the cloud and the ability to scale and, well, do things we used to have to do in a data center. Now, from the comfort of our own IDE. And it became a branched evolution for us. Who uses Terraform here? Cool. Who uses CloudFormation? Great. I've almost hit about 70 to 80%. The 20% of you, if you're using SDKs and all other cool stuff, come talk to me. But anyway, my point is, you would have or currently do use these two technologies, right? Well, let's dive a little deeper. Let's look at that precursor and how that evolution happened, right? The early days. Technically, now, the duopoly of infrastructure code exists. 70% of you said you're either using one of these two. For the people that are still using CloudFormation, come to me. I will teach you CDK. I will sit down with you. We'll find a language that works with you, and I will get you across that point. Why? Because CloudFormation is fantastic when you don't have to read 4,500 lines of code. CDK is great because I can do the same thing with, what, 40 lines? But anyway, that's a topic for another discussion. The two ideologies clashed. Can't say that word twice. The two ideologies clashed. And from that clash came great things, right? You want competition. This is why you have AWS now on its toes from Azure and all these other competitors coming in and basically doing serverless as well. And we want that. I want Lambda to be better. And guess what it is? Every day there's more and more things coming out. And well, where does that really get us? Well, it got for infrastructure's code in the early days, the creation of Terragon. Terra Grunt, rather. Scepter, if you've had to use that before, which is an abstraction to help build uh, better CloudFormation templates during the early days. Uh, there was one that I've got flagged as Ruby, but they don't have an icon. CFNDSL. If anybody has used it, anybody heard of it? One person. Thank you. CFNDSL is a Ruby way of creating uh, CloudFormation, right? Don't use it, but you know what? It was an early day. It's good to understand. And then 
from that aspect came serverless. Because it's really kicked off. If I were to talk to serverless to most of you in 2016, you'd be like, what? What was, what was that? I still have to run servers, right? It would have had cold start issues, you had all these problems, but now it's become so quick and easily accessible that at the end of the day, we want the ability to do it in the short amount of time as possible. Time to market is a bigger factor to success than the better product. Betamax and VHS is the perfect example, right? HD, disk, and uh, Blu-ray is another example. It's not always about the better product, it's about how quickly you can do it. And then now. This is where the big change happened, right? Evolution didn't stop. We went from CloudFormation to SAM. Who uses SAM? It's awesome, right? It's a shorthand form using YAML to create what we do inside of AWS using serverless, right? Really simple way to create a bunch of little APIs, and we can technically scale to production as well. There are better ways to do it, but it's a fantastic first step for AWS. Hell, they brought local testing for serverless. And that means I don't have to spend money, and this is, mind you, AWS made this, I don't have to spend money in AWS to test things. I can test it locally, which is great. But the evolution didn't stop. It went beyond that, right? We went from CloudFormation to SAM, to CDK, my lord and savior, and we even had serverless stack. And from CDK again, we spawned SST, and SST is a wonderful product. It's a wrapper for what you already have. If you have an Astro site, if you have Svelte, it'll give you the tools to push to AWS. And it, because it's in TypeScript, it actually utilizes CDK underneath the hood. But you might be saying, well, that's not agnostic. That's really nothing, right? That's really just more AWS stuff. We're not really holistically approaching infrastructure as code serverlessly. Well, if you look far enough, and if you can really zoom in a little bit there, CDK has a little Terraform logo. With CDK, you have CDKTF, right? Where you can actually generate Terraform and execute it, plan and apply, same way as most of you do now, but in your language of choice. The benefit here is one that people tend to forget. If you hate the code, but you like infrastructure, this is the middle ground to teach people to code. Not everyone wants to know app logic. They just want to build the infra. And this way, you can do both. Technically, you can do the same thing with serverless framework, but don't use serverless framework. They're going to drain you for every dollar you got. And it's bad enough, right? Use AMP instead. AMP is an absolutely wonderful product. If you have to pay for it, you have to go through the enterprise side, and you are on AWS, AMP is a fantastic product to, to kind of get you across that line. And if you're not looking for that, but you're looking for something a little bit more open source, baseline. Look, I'm here as Mantle Group, but I've used this product during its early days. I had a good opportunity to talk to one of its creators, Thomas, and it's fantastic. It speaks for itself. It takes care of a whole lot. Go have a chat to them. But where are we going with this? What's the future that we're looking at? We spoke about now the early days in the past. But what we want to focus on is where is it taking us? Well, it's all good things. We find leaders. We find people who are going to inspire us to take that next step. CDK was made by somebody. CDK was made by this man, uh, Elad Ben Israel. He was one of the co-founders and creators of uh, CDK. And what he basically did is he started another company. And through the other company, he saw an opportunity for what does infrastructure as code look like as we now blur the lines between developer and system administrator heavily, not DevOps but basically one-to-one. -one. Well, he looked at the future and created something called Wing. It's not Red Bull, so don't get too confused. Is it the same old infrastructure as code? No, 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 no. Completely different approach, and it's a wonderful approach. This is what it is exactly, right? What they do with Wing is they say, bring a cloud, give me a bucket, give me a function, give me a counter, and point me to the direction, and that's it. It'll go through, give you local testing. It'll go through and generate to depend, whichever cloud you need your app. None of the business logic required to know AWS contextually. None of the business logic to know Azure. You just know that the concepts are the same. For example, bucket, blob storage, and whatever GCP has. Same thing with functions. Azure has the Azure functions. AWS has you know, the greatest function of all time, Lambda and then so on and so forth. And as these kind of get generated for you, you don't really have to worry about the headaches that come with CloudFormation, or with Terraform for that matter, because who's had to deal with a state file gone wrong? You can put your hand up, it's okay. I've been there too. Yeah, I get a bit of PTSD from that. But nonetheless, if you're stuck in that world though, and you still have to use CDK, not a bad thing by the way, 
or Terraform, they give you the option to do it still. So this is in their native language. It's a um, terrible word, wing lang. Um, and it'll actually help you generate that out. But then they've realized, as most of the rest of the world has, everybody uses TypeScript, for better or worse. They give you a TypeScript option as well. And what they can do from there, they can actually generate CloudFormation and Terraform. So if you're stuck in a place where you are still needing to utilize CloudFormation or Terraform, Wink can do that for you. So if you imagine that time to market is a really critical thing, well, Wink gets you there quicker. And look, honestly, that is the true definition of infrastructure and code becoming one. Because my business logic and my app logic is baked into my infrastructure logic. It isn't a separator. It isn't a parameter I'm pulling in from a random JSON file or pointing to another file and hoping it compiles. No, no, no. It's in line. So if we go back quickly, when you notice um, the section we actually have there at the bottom where we're actually setting the consumer, that's their shorthand form of a function that will consume an object from a bucket. And what we're actually saying there with the put object is when something put comes through, I will respond with a hello world message. So for simple apps and API, you can abstract that and you can quickly deploy it. But the best part is it's free. Best you, the most thing you have to spend right now is your own time to test it out. It's an alpha. And you might consider, well, if it's an alpha, is it going to go anywhere? Well, money speaks. And the $30 million VC that I think it was a year, before, year ago, or if not the year before that, that they got to actually create Wing means it's going to stick around for a little while. How long for, whether it be when they go from startup to scale up to open source, whatever it be, it is well worth trying. Because we're coming to a point where the cloud vendors now are all competing for not just the right technology, but the same execution point. It's like Ferrari, Lamborghini, and Maserati. They're all cars, they're all quick, they're all wonderful, all happen to be Italian, but they're all providing similar sort of luxury services. And we no longer lack the luxury of one provider for serverless. It's everywhere. But wait, SST kind of does that as well. SST, I spoke about briefly. I'm not going to go too into depth because there's another talk about SST, but SST is moving away from being just CDK, means just AWS. They're creating something called ION. And ION is their implementation of cross-cloud serverless infrastructure as code. And because it's cross-cloud, it's agnostic. It means it's going to work for everything. And if you really want to know why they did that, they created a wonderful, lengthy blog about moving away from CDK. I love CDK, and I'm a big fan of it. But it's not a square peg for a round hole. There's good logic behind it, and there's good reasons to move, even better reasons to use baseline. But it's well worth the read. And given the interest of time, and I'm sure most of you are hungry, any questions? Yep. So. Plumi is built in Terraform, right? Effectively, you're doing the same thing you're doing with CDK TFUI we're doing with Plumi. Plumi as a product with its own Plumi engine sits in the gray lines between doing its own thing and using Terraform. Absolutely an option. But is it truly agnostic? Your context has to change, just like Terraform. By the way, I am that fan. Plumi is great. But in the interest of keeping things to a, shall we say, Straight line focus, I didn't want to include them. But you're absolutely right. They are an option. SST using Pulumi. SST. It, SST also uses CDK. It will be using Pulumi. And thank you for finding that up. The ION engine they're actually creating will be using Pulumi underneath to actually generate that out. So this is why it's worth investigating. Any more before I finish off? Cool. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Bojan.